All right, we're all set. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Mike Bullis. I'm executive director of the Image Center of Maryland. We're the SIL that serves Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and Harford County. But for today's purposes, you are here with Independence Amplified Maryland, a voice for people with disabilities from the independent living community. These are meetings that um, will focus on disability issues on a statewide basis. It's a place where Marylanders with disabilities say, I am, I am capable. I am confident, I'm qualified, I'm free to choose, I'm willing to give, I'm a partner, and I am speaking out in solidarity with those whose voices are not heard when they cry out for justice. I am, with all of you, united for a better world of peace. This is statewide. This is a statewide focus for these meetings. So very. So the speakers will tend to have have information about services in your county and your area. We have with us several centers for independent living today. We have David Dresner from the Freedom Freedom Center. Carol, they serve Carol and Frederick County. We have folks from Independence Now. Prince, they serve Prince George's and Montgomery County. And. I have my co-host with me today, Katie Collins Erke. Katie is the Executive Director of Accessible Resources for Independent Independence. They serve Harold and Anne Arundel, Howard in Anne Arundel County, sorry. Um, and I'm gonna turn the show now over to Katie Collins Erke to introduce our guest speaker for the day. Thank you, Mike. We're so excited to have everyone on here for our very first I Am. Independence Amplified Maryland. Um, so today we're bringing on um, uh, some someone I've known for several years now, Quentin Askew. Um, and uh, Quentin and I go back to um, his days at the Laurel Multi-Service Center, um, which is a, is a wonderful um, model, as you all should check it out. Um, it takes place within Howard County government and allows for community nonprofits and other um, uh, government um, agencies to get together and assist people in kind of a one-stop shop. So um, our SIL has someone there two days a month um, assisting people with disability issues. Um, and so I was lucky enough to get to know Quentin and his char charismatic style of leadership. So Quentin, before we get started on your, um, on your presentation, I just I have a few questions for you. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. Okay. So can you can you tell us about your role with two one one? Yes. So again, and welcome everyone, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Katie and Michael. Um, so my role with two one Maryland is really overseeing our day to day op day to day state operations, and so we have uh, four uh, call centers throughout the state of Maryland that answers calls on behalf of constituents throughout Maryland for any services which is health and human service related. So if anyone needs help with food, uh, medical issues, or any other concerns, they can call 211 and be connected to any service. And so my role is just ensuring that our services are connected throughout the state and that we, we have really the capacity and the relationships with organizations such as yours to make sure folks have a place to go when they need help. Great, and I know two one one does great work. I um I we often um, interface with a lot of your staff um, with the um, Alliance of Information um, and Referral Specialists. So um, it's exciting that um, I have this opportunity uh, to talk to you. Um, what is your favorite part about working at two one one? Wow, favorite part of working at two one one. So many. I think the my, the favorite part is really the call centers. Um, so each of our call centers, they have you know, amazing staff who, who are really doing great work now. Uh, these are folks who work, who are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and, you know, answering calls on behalf of folks who are calling for help. And so, they, you know, these are individuals who are really empathetic and, and really enjoying and compassionate about the work that they do. Part is just really being able to, to partner with these call centers that are really doing this day-to-day -day health and human service crisis work. Great. Um, and now for a less serious topic, if you had to choose to be a superhero, which one would you be? Uh-oh, a superhero. <laughs> That's a great question. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Who would I like to be? Um, Aquaman, because I really can't swim. Okay, <laughs> all right. And, and, and my, my twins have been trying to teach me, but it's like, you know, just let me stay in three feet. So. <laughs> That's okay, we won't hold it against you. 
Um, so, you know, you prepared a great presentation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and give give you the um, floor and I'll, I'll kind of go through the PowerPoint. Just tell me when to flip. Sure. You'll see me fumble here for a minute. There's a bar that gets in the way. Not a problem. And so, and there, there we are. And so, I figured, you know, there are a couple of different slides with the, the PowerPoint. But I, you know, I, I love to talk. And so, you know, we'll go through them quickly. And I just would love to answer any questions that folks have. And so, to for anyone who's not familiar with two one one, we are a statewide nonprofit organization. And so, by law. Anyone who has a health and human service need uh, has the right to call 211 for help. And that's help for any disability concern, that's help for any food, employment, any human resource or health related concern. Um, by law, 211 is the health and human service referral number for the state. Um, we can go click to the next one. And actually, uh, these, this is lovely pictures. Um, these pictures are actually pictures of folks who work within the call center. And so one of our local Baltimore United Way call centers uh, actually was the uh, group that were chosen in order to be the national folk, the national pictures uh, for 201s across the nation. And so we were excited about that. They look a whole lot better than me. <laughs> so <laughs> we can go to the next slide. Um, I, I just wanted to briefly just give folks a overview and just so you have an understanding of if you call 211, what that sounds like. And Katie, we, we don't have to play the whole thing, but maybe a minute of it just to give folks an understanding. Can you hear it? Nope. Nope. Yeah. Not sure if folks can hear it well. All right, well, okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm sorry, Quentin. I should that's have tested right. that out. No, that's I guess. all right, we'll make it, we'll make it available. Okay. Um, what that was, it, it just gave the individual um, an experience of what the caller would, would understand and hear when they call 211. So anyone that calls 211, you will be connected to a live person. That live person will get an understanding of what your needs are. And so if you're calling to say, hey, I'm not sure exactly what I need, but these are some of the concerns that I have. You'll have the opportunity to talk to a live person that will say, okay, based on what you're explaining to me, these are the best resources that I have depending upon where you live. And so all of our resources are dedicated depending upon the zip code that you live in so that we can ensure that you have a resource that's close within your community. We can skip to the next one. Oh. I don't know what I just did. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so this slide here. So if someone uh, calls 211, you can talk to a live person 24 hours a day, no matter which location you're in. And so depending upon where you call from, you will be connected to the closest call center in your community. Um, and again, you can call us 24 hours, 365 days per year. If you just have an interest in going to our website, as you'll see here, if you go to www211md.org, uh, this is just a, a picture of the front page of our website, but you'll see on our website that we have several boxes that you can choose from. So if you have someone that's searching for food, housing, aging and disability, or services for children and families, if you click any of these boxes, it'll bring up a smaller box that will ask for your zip code. Along with your zip code, it'll ask you other specific questions to make sure that we find the right resource that you need. Uh, sometimes we find it's, it's some folks when you are searching for resources in the community, we almost have to be sort of a brain surgeon to know or have to figure out what we're looking for. But if you go to two on one site, it, it will guide you through specific questions to make sure that you find the resource that you need. So I would definitely encourage folks to check out our website. And these resources are statewide. So for every jurisdiction, we have specific resources that are available for anyone. Hey, Quentin? Yes. How would I know when to call 211 and when to call 311? That's a great question. So for, any of it, for folks who are familiar with 311, 311 is for 
I have a pothole in my community or my neighbor is playing music really loud and I, and it's not an emergency, but I just need to go to sleep. <laughs> you can call 211 uh, if you don't have any more food or if your lights are out and you're not sure how to get them turned back on um, or if rent is due right? and, 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 you, and you may not necessarily have enough money to pay your rent. So for any service that is not an emergency, but it is a need, you can call 211. But even if you're not sure, I would say call 211 because we can guide you to the right place. Uh, and we can make sure that, you know, if it's a question for 311, that will connect you to 311. But you can't go wrong if you do dial 211. Gotcha. Thank you. This, this really just shows uh, specific numbers of folks uh, um, that we've connected with. So everyone know that we are currently in, uh, unfortunately, uh, COVID-19. Um, and so throughout the state of Maryland, the governor has put in executive orders um, in which we are now in the first phase. But previously, everyone was, we needed to stay home in order to stay safe and to make sure folks um, could stay in the best of health. 211 Maryland um, by the governor has taken calls throughout the state for anyone who has questions related to COVID-19. And so if you are someone who still has questions about COVID related activities, you need to find information about testing. You need to find information about where to go for food or any other services. Uh, the governor has requested that anyone can call 211 in order to get this information. And so if you're not really sure of exactly what you might need, but it's something that's COVID related about with your school or any other organization you work with, you can call 211 to get a service. If folks, uh, if you have access to a cell phone and you just would like to get alerts, if you just wanna stay up to date about anything that the governor says or any other alerts that you wanna be aware of, down here where it's highlighted, if you have your cell phone and you text MD Ready to 898-211, you will subscribe to resources that will give you updates every time the governor makes announcements or every time the governor has important information for you to know. We will keep you updated with everything that's going on in your community. This, is, this just really talks about some of the other different relationships that we have. Um, and just for the sake of the call, um, besides calling 211 for Health and Human Services, we are also the crisis line for the state. So if there is anyone who is in need of uh, any crisis related services related to mental health or substance use, um, dealing with uh, suicide or any depression or just not feeling well, if you call 211 and press one, you will be connected to someone immediately. So we have a relationship with the Maryland Department of Health to be able to provide uh, emergency crisis services and counseling for anyone. And if there's a need to send someone to your home or to connect with someone, if you call 211, we will make sure that you are connected with someone within your community. So when in need, in any crisis, you can dial 211, press one, and you are immediately connected to someone. Um, we also have an initiative going on throughout the state for a uh, food program. And so if there is anyone that you are providing services to, or if you are in need of food and you can't get out, and you can't get out because you may have an illness, uh, you can't get out because you may have a disability that is preventing you from leaving your home, uh, or you may not have transportation. If you call 211, we can get you connected with a food service that will have food delivered to you. So there will be a box of food delivered to you and your family. Uh, no matter if you live in Baltimore City, Prince George's County or Kent County, um, if you are home or not able to get out, if you call 211, we can help support you in order to get food. Uh, last but not least, if you are taking care of a senior or if you are a senior adult in, commun in uh, the state of Maryland and you need help and support to uh, do things like understand technology, or anything related to hygiene or any other particular service you need to do around your home, if you call 211, we have a caregiver service where we can send someone to your home to help support you uh, while you are home for any volunteer needs you might have. So if you need food and you can't get out, you can call 211. If you have a senior that you are taking care of or, or are a senior 
and you need someone to come to your home for help, you can call 211 for that service. And if you are in need for any crisis services, if you call 211 Press 1, we will connect you to someone right away. So some of the things um, that you can also do to help support uh, 211, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. So definitely if you have other areas of just letting folks know that you know 211 is a resource in your community, you can connect with individuals. Uh, we can also connect you with volunteer opportunities. So you may, you may want to help someone else. And so if you're not sure exactly how to connect with someone else to provide help, if you call 211, we can tell you where you can connect with in your community to also support somebody else. If you have any uh, social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, connect with us. I'm not the most media savvy uh, person, but if you connect with us um, through social medias, you'll also get updates as well about everything else that's going on. If you work with an organization, a nonprofit organization in Mar throughout Maryland, um, please make sure your information is in the 2-1 Maryland database. If you're not sure, call us. We can uh, provide updates for you. But the database is only as good as the information we have in. And so if you are connected with any organization that provides a service to our folks throughout Maryland, you know, please let us know, connect with us and partner with us. Uh, the last way of helping us is also subscribing to the text alerts. We want to make sure that folks are able to stay safe and connected. And so if you text MD Ready to 898-211, you will get, begin to get text alerts every time the governor makes announcements or every time there is important information to make sure that you stay safe and updated with events that are going on. So, you know, we normally don't do this during a presentation and tell folks take your phones out because it means you're not listening to me anymore. <laughs> but if, if folks do have phones and you have cell phones, you know, if you just take them out for a minute, just to, just to have them handy while you're looking at, and actually you can go to the next slide, Katie. So if you do have your cell phones out, here are the ways that you can connect with us. And so if you do have Twitter, you know, connect with us through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn, um, because the folks that you are connected with will help us to spread the words and information further by your connections. And so we definitely want to stay connected with you. Um, if you're with an organization and you want to share information statewide, we can help to push your information out as well, as well as connecting to our website. So I can go on and on, but I'm sure Katie wants me to be quiet and answer some questions now. Yeah, I've got another one. Great. Okay, so um, Baltimore City's Health Department has people um, answering phones every day, taking re in requests for information. Baltimore County does. I'm assuming a lot of the counties do. How do people know when they should call 211 or when they should call like their local county Department of Aging or Health Department? and and what's the difference in the information they might get? Great question. So one of the things that we have been trying to do, because we do know that there are a lot of phone numbers um, and, and it can be confusing for each, depending upon where you live. There could be an 800 number or just a regular 410 number. Um, what 211 does is we, we try to just provide to have an easy number that folks can call to still get connected to their local resource. And so what the experience will be, even if you live in Baltimore City or if you live in Montgomery County and you are seeking resources for aging um, and, you, and you want to connect with your office on aging for service, we will ensure our, our role is to identify what your need is, but also make sure you still get connected to that local service. Yeah. So by calling 211, we will just get a better understanding of what your needs are to save you from having to make an extra call um, and to call folks who may not be able to help you, but to just provide, make sure you have the right number to call in your community. So we are really just that connector back to the local service in your yes. community. Well, I appreciate that because sometimes as Centers for Independent Living, by the time people get to us, they're mad. Yes. Because <laughs> you know, they already made 12 phone calls. So That's right, right. And so, yeah. and, and with our job is just to be able to ensure, you know, the phone number is correct. And 
you know, this organization still has the lights on and they provide the service that you think they provide. And so a call center representative will be able to check our database to make sure that that's the actual number, to provide you a contact person, and also to be able to provide some type of follow-up to ensure that you've gotten what you need. Well, you're a fellow uh, nonprofit, I believe 211 is a nonprofit, right? Yes, 211 is, is an independent nonprofit. Um, so you should just have relationships. free to tell people to give you money. I'm sorry, say that one more time, Mike. You should feel free to, to, to fundraise a little bit. Tell people to give you money. It's all yes, right. Yes, money is always great. <laughs> but, and so a, a lot of our relationships um, come with the state. And so we are a, a partner with the state. A lot of our funding comes from the state. But 2 on Maryland is, is an independent nonprofit. Right. Great. So um, I have some um, questions, some from the audience. Um, so with the food box, uh, that um, is delivering food to people that you talked mm -hmm. about. What about people who have things like diabetes or food allergies or um, keep kosher? How do you ha handle those specific food needs? That's a great point. So when someone calls 211, they will identify if the person <laughs> calling, if there are any allergies or if there is anything that a person cannot eat. Um, that is identified through the intake and that will determine where the food may come from and what type of food the person receives. So there is food that is provided for our, our members who are, um, who are diabetic and, and who, are, um, who cannot eat specific processed food. And so through the different relationships, we'll determine who actually provides the food to yeah, and actually I was um, on a call the other day learning about the, the partnership that you have with the Salvation Army. Um, and what I thought was very impressive was that the Salvation Army is kind of able to figure out how they're going to handle the specific requests. So if someone needs, for example, prepared meals, they can, they can accommodate that. Or if they just need groceries, they can accommodate that. But that they kind of are able to specialize um, what the needs of the person are. Yes, and also, you know, the person staying in a hotel or motel without specific, not able to cook. And so when you call, when you call 211, the, these call specialists will kind of vet and, I, and understand what your living situation is so that they'll provide the best food, food opportunity for you. And so again, you know, it could be if someone who's not able to cook or just needs sort of cold meals and not able to heat anything. But they, they, Salvation Army is, doing, is really doing a great job to provide, to fill the gap and provide the specific food service that, that is needed. Through Baltimore City, the relationship is with Amazon. And Amazon is actually doing the deliveries for individuals who live in Baltimore City. Um, but for the other surrounding states, we are partnering with Salvation Army to make those deliveries for us. Great. Um, and just a question, because I don't know if it was clear to everyone. I, I kind of got thinking about it. When you say dial 211, it's kind of the same way you would dial like 911. You just dial those numbers and that's it. Yes. Yep. You just dial, dial those three digits and it will connect you to the closest call center, 211 call center, from where you're, where you're calling from. Uh, the idea is that no matter where you are, you may have a 410 Baltimore City number, but you are in Frederick staying at the time. It will, it will connect you to our closest call center that's in Frederick in order to be able to help support you. So just as you would dial 311 or 911, you can just dial 211 from your phone. Um, folks can also, if, if folks don't have an interest in speaking to someone, if you go to our website, you are able to chat with us. So on the website, there's a chat feature that you can, you can click and you can chat with someone 24 hours a day. You can also text. And so if you text your zip code to 898211, you're able to, you're able to have a two-way text message with text message uh, uh, communication with someone. And so you can still get the service you need by text, chat, or by phone. It's really cool. Um, so speaking of your call centers, um, one of your slides had like 90,000 calls since March. And that blows my mind. It's impressive that you've been able to kind of handle that, that many calls. How, about how many staff do you have working across the state? Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it's different in each state. Um, each of our call centers, so for example, our, our call center in Baltimore, there's gen generally about 13, 14 individuals working in the call center. Due to the increase in calls with COVID, 
they have added an additional 50 volunteers. And so now there are about 60 folks who are working answering phones. And so of course, with the technology, folks can work from home uh, now. And so we can route calls with the technology we have to wherever the person is. As long as they have our headset and they have an internet connection, we can connect them uh, in order to take calls for us. In some of our Southern Maryland locations, our call centers, there may be about uh, nine to 10 individuals, but it, it really depends. Our Central Maryland and our Prince George's County has, probably has the, more, the larger uh, staff volume. But currently, each of our centers have increased capacity just because of the number of calls that are coming in related to COVID. And so we've had a great opportunity to have volunteers to come in and help support the work. How That's many great. staff all together? Oh, currently, probably with all the volunteers, maybe over 100. Yeah. Okay. It's impressive. Um, so another question from the audience, does 211 assist families with children with disabilities respite support? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, yes. And so it, depending upon what the specific needs are, yes. Um, and so I would encourage the individual to call 211. Even through, the person is able to even utilize the website. I know that there is specific information there, but the best we always say is to call because they're able to actually talk to a live person to understand exactly what the need is to connect them with. So yes, the answer is yes. The long answer is yes. <laughs> Okay, I, are you ready for a stump the presenter question? Uh oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> How do you ensure that the services that are there to formally address a social problem such as housing is able to help the specific client in their situation? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So <clears throat> I think a couple ways. Our, our job with 211 is, is to really be able to provide the individual who's calling the right source based upon the information they provide to us. <clears throat> depending upon what their needs in order to connect them to the service. Um, we know a lot of times that even though we provide information for, where someone can go and get help, doesn't mean that that organization has the ability to help them or that they have the capacity to help them. And so one of the things that we do with 211 is that there is follow-up that's done for folks who are calling um, to one, ensure that they've got a connection but if they have it, you know, we're able to provide them the next best resources. Um, the other way that we use this information for folks who are um, looking for help and may not always able to get the help they receive is the data that we get back. And so understanding that, you know, we had, if there are 20 folks who are calling for housing and there's no housing assistance available in this particular community, that is data and information that we receive and that we take back and that we utilize to talk with our local legislators and community organizations to say, here's a gap in your community. We have folks who are calling 211 who are in Baltimore, Baltimore County, and other jurisdictions who are searching for food, who are searching for housing. Um, this is a percentage of housing that's not available. This is a percentage of money that's not available. You know, how can you help? And so we use the information and the data from folks who are calling in order to at least and to try and help with sort of policy and getting folks to understand what the community looks like. So that's why it's really important for the folks who are calling to you know, provide us that information so that we're able to, again, use this information to better help um, for the resources that are not there. Great, yeah, and I know we get, we get calls all the time about things like housing and the lack of affordable or accessible or both housing. And um, I'm constantly telling people, talk to your elected officials, call your elected officials, tell them this is a problem because yes. um, the community organizations can only do so much. There needs to be, you know, the backing from the government that has money to create the affordable housing. So um, it's good. Yeah, it is. And, 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 they, and their voices are strong. And so, you know, we need the folks who are calling for these services, you know, to be advocates. And, and so, you know, we, in, in order to get these particular services that are needed, so that's true. Great. Tell you about what my experiences were with calling and they were disappointing because Frederick doesn't, Frederick was severely gentrified in the past several years. So I used to be able to afford rent with my disability pension and now I can't. And in between uh, today and four years ago, I made maybe two or three phone calls to 211, probably two about myself and one about some other family that I was helping with a group of folks. And uh, it was disappointing because 
we just understood that it's a system that can send somebody, uh, that people can get sent on a loop. They are given advice. Obviously, we already reached out to those organizations. No, Frederick doesn't want people who are not uh, profit-bearing. Uh, it displaces them by high rent and uh, non-existent, very dysfunctional welfare. And uh, I was disappointed at the time. <clears throat> and I think that might have been Vladimir that was sharing that. And that, and that is a great example of like unmet needs in the community. Because I, I think it, it shows that, you know, where the gap is and what the needs are. And sometimes, as you mentioned, Katie, that where, you know, the, the, where the, the government or local officials may not necessarily know or be aware, but, you know, if, if more of those stories are told, it, it really makes a difference. Um, and, you know, exactly what Vladimir is saying, like, you know, that's the same story that we hear in a lot of places, unfortunately. And, and, you know, and that is, a, that is a need in communities, affordable housing and being able to live affordably where you are. And so, you know, that, that information stories that he's sharing is, is really the important stories that we continuously need to hear to be able to share with folks who, who make those decisions. Yeah, and, and just as a reminder, you know, the primary election is um, June 2nd, so if you haven't sent in your ballot or voted, make sure you do that, um, because really your vote is your voice, and if you're not voting, you don't have a voice and this is why it's so a problem is and they need to know that you you put them in office <laughs> or didn't put them in office yeah. either way it's really important to vote so um let's see um i think one thing that i would be interested in hearing a little bit about clinton is some of the um you know at, you know some of the areas in which 2-1-1 is seeing um you know a need in our in our experience as sills we kind of see there's usually around uh, three three main things is employment, it's um, transportation, and it's housing. Um, and those are continually things that, that come up, um, regardless of how much work we've done under the Americans with Disabilities Act and how much progress we've made. Um, those are continually things that we're um, impacted by. So could you talk a little bit about kind of what the top needs 211 sees are? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> So our, the top three needs, uh, even this past fiscal year, so previous, in previous years, our top needs were housing, food, and, and, rental, and uh, rental assistance. So lack of housing, food, and rental assistance. This past year, our top need was around mental health. So it went from mental health to food and then housing. And so, you know, really looking at the data and trying to understand one, you know, hopefully that the mental health is being less stigmatized and that more folks are seeking help. But then also on the other end, we understand that more folks are dealing with crisis during this particular time. And so our numbers, even during COVID, our numbers for crisis calls have increased as well. And so we understand that folks are, are currently just trying to survive and take care of their basic needs. And, and soon we feel that there will be an additional increase in, in the amount of crisis calls that we are receiving. But me mental health, uh, mental health, suicide, uh, substance use have been the highest calls uh, that we've seen in previous years. Um, food, food access continues to also be a, a second. But, you know, housing is just one of those concerns and issues that has just been around. And I think which is an important issue that we need to do more legislatively in order to, to move that forward. But unfortunately, mental health has sort of taken the top spot with the callers that we're seeing now. And, and most of our mental health uh, and suicide connections come from chat or text. So a lot of folks who are dealing with mental health utilize our, our chat because it provides an opportunity, not necessarily to speak to a person, but it provides them that independence to talk about their issues um, with, without necessarily connecting in a sense. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that we want to make all of our areas of connection available to folks who need to reach us. That's great. And I noticed um, that you do the, you do the crisis, which I didn't, I actually I didn't know that, that if you call 211, you press one, you get connected to someone who can help you with, with a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, does that, how does that then does that get transferred like so Howard County has a team that has crisis or Anne Arundel County has a mobile crisis team? Is that part of the process or is it separate from? 
that, that is part of the process. So anyone who, who dials 211 who is in crisis and they call 211 and press one, they are immediately connected with one of our accredited uh, crisis centers. And so when they are connected to one of these crisis centers, they are able to, uh, one, to determine if this is an immediate crisis, if there's um, an emergency mobile team that needs to go out, or is this someone that I can have a conversation with in order to connect them to a resource? And so based upon the significance of the crisis is determined if they will, if other emergency resources need to be sent out to the person's home or connected uh, to someone else locally for help. Uh, a lot of times through our crisis centers, they are able to support the individual, connect them to other services and provide follow-up. But if there is an immediate connection to emergency services uh, throughout through the call centers, they will connect with the local authorities or local connections there to make sure someone goes out. Great. Now, if anyone has any other questions, please put them now in the chat box. Yeah, I've got another one. Oh, okay, great. So, um, Quentin, maybe I didn't understand earlier when you talked about follow-up. So if I call, uh, if I call 211 and I ask about a specific issue related to housing, can I expect that a week later or a few days later, somebody's going to call me back and say, hey, did you get what you needed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of the important things that we do is, is follow up. So each of our call center does follow up with large percentage of the calls that come in. And so there is a, once you're speaking someone, there's an understanding that, hey, we're going to connect you to the service or try to get you there. Um, and if one, we always let individuals know, if you don't get what you need, call us back. Um, in addition to that, there are there phone call follow-ups or electronic follow-ups. So we have some of our, one of our call centers who does an electronic text to say, hey, you know, text one, did you get what you need? Or two, if you didn't, person text two, we'll contact them back and say, like, what else is there can we do? Or we'll send them the next three available resources in their particular community. Got so that, that follow-up is done by either uh, text or by a live person calling, connecting back. Okay, thank you. Um, so is uh, 211 affiliated with the United uh, Way? Uh, both in the accelerator program and then also in the So you, United, United Way is one of the call, United Way has a call center and their call center within United Way of Central Maryland is a 21 Maryland call center. Gotcha. So United Way's call center is under the umbrella of 211 Maryland. Okay. Um, next question is, um, is 211 a mandated reporter? Are police or adult protective services going to be called? Other suicide lines like grassroots and crisis texts are mandated and it's traumatic when cops show up. So each of our crisis call centers are sort of, I guess, similar to grassroots. Actually, grassroots is one of our crisis centers and answer calls on our behalf. And so if there is an emergency, uh, if the person is in crisis, then that call center will take the, the best approach to ensure the safety of the individual. Um, so that, that, will, that will sort of be the, the priority, just ensuring the individual's safety um, when they're calling our crisis line. Um, if it's someone who's calling and, and just need to talk and, and, they are, and, and um, they're, they're not a danger to themselves or others, but they just need some support, then that particular individual will be supported by our crisis call counselors uh, within the call center. And the reporters at that point? Correct, and then, but our, our, um, the call centers will ensure that, you know, the safety of that individual is taken into account first. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Will 211 be a mechanism to keep track of unmet needs based on the logs of issues so we can move the needs to a higher level of advocacy? That's an ask for you, Quentin. That is a great question. <laughs> so, <laughs> two answers to that. Yes, and so we are, we are moving. So we have a, um, I'm sorry I didn't have it on the slide, but if you go to our 201 Maryland website, at the bottom of the website, there is a link which for 211 counts. So that 211 counts gives you a list of all the 211 data that's available. You can uh, disseminate it by zip code, location, unmet needs, and what callers are requesting for. So for that um, viewer who asked that particular question, that, that is probably a, a great place to start on our website, uh, our 211 counts website. But we also are moving to a place where we will have more forward-facing data 
to be able to show the community what the needs are coming and the unmet needs are in their community. <clears throat> but I would recommend that per, that the individual uh, check out our website, look at the bottom for two on one counts, and 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 reach out to me because even when you connect with the website, um, you know there's there's through the email you can connect back to me and and we can definitely have more discussions about the data. But we do understand that that's an important mechanism for folks who are trying to um, support policy within the community. So I wonder if you slate for the last couple of years to try and get a measly $90,000 to help pay for the housing assistance that Centers for Independent Living around the state provide. Um, and I'm wondering, I get, one of the things that, that they raise is, well, you know, is there really a need and, and or is, is, isn't this a priority somebody else should pay for? You know that one. And, uh, um, but I guess I wonder how, how detailed is your data? Can it tell us how many people, how many calls you guys get in a year related to specifically to accessible or uh, disability related housing? So, we, <clears throat> so the data that we receive, we, re we do receive um, very specific data. Um, if specific questions are asked, some questions are, are asked related to disability, but um, <clears throat> they're in depending upon what the need in the program, the service is. Um, the two on one counts gives you an idea of the specific data that we capture, but yeah. it's not a full picture because we don't make everything forward facing. But yeah. we do work with nonprofits and other organizations where you can say, hey, Quentin, this is the information that we're looking for. And we can work with our data, data team to provide uh, the best data that we have for you. Um, but we, we collect various data points from each of the individuals who are calling um, 211. All right. Well, we'll have to talk about that later and see how specific it is and see if we might be able to work together to get, uh, get some of these resources. It's one of the it's one of the top resources for us, obviously, too, is people calling about needs for housing, uh, rental housing, as well as accessible housing to live in, et cetera. And, uh, and we, we, we spend an, an incredible amount of time on Section 811 housing uh, resources, et cetera. So maybe we can work together to figure out a solution to this. Yes, and which one of the, one of the previous viewers mentioned a reference to the housing. And so even when you have a chance to look at the data, I would love to talk more because if there are data points and things that we may not be capturing that are useful, yeah. um, we have the capacity and ability to do that. And so yeah. again, our goal is to help to, to push policy that will help support individuals who are within the state and to help inform. And so that's definitely something that we could do. We would definitely be interested in, in looking at that. That'd be great. Thank you so much. And if there's one thing I know about Quentin is that he is great with community partnerships. So yeah, um, yeah, he, yeah he's great. So, uh, okay, another one, I think this is probably gonna be close to the last question because I think this is maybe gonna be um, interesting to see you answer. Single men and LGBT people aren't seeing a lot of subsidized housing. The system is set up based on obsolete gender roles. Is there an attempt to change that? So <clears throat> I think part of that is also with the data and what the story that organizations like ours and others are able to tell what the needs are. Um, and so I, I think the more that we can identify who our community members are that are seeking these specific services with housing and we can be more detailed about the needs, the better the story that we can tell. But I think part of that also is dependent upon organizations like mine to be able to understand more about how we can <clears throat> understand more about what the needs are and, and understand more how we are collecting data and information to support, um, to be able to support some of those needs that folks are looking for. And so I think that goes back to the question that Michael just mentioned, <clears throat> you know, are, are we collecting data to support this? And I think that um, the more folks sort of take a look at what we're doing and can see some of the data that we're doing um, and can help us to understand, you know, where there may be gaps in the information that we are collecting, I think, you know, we could, we could be a great partner in helping to tell that story as well. One, we, are, we are doing that with, around, with our crisis work. So we are getting a little more detailed with our crisis data that we're pulling that we are, we'll be able to specifically 
look at our LGBTQ community and, and look at individuals specifically with disability or veterans and, and who else is seeking services around mental health and substance use. Um, so that's a, a big project that we're working on with our crisis work. And so definitely something, you know, we would love to do, especially for the health and human service side. Um, and so I think, you know, the more that we can continue to have these conversations and talk and partner with organizations like yours, I think the better that we could, you know, really do some great things with the data and the stories that we're telling. So we're open, we're open, we're open to help. Thank you very much. Um, All right, Mike, take it away. Well, let me remind everybody, this will be available on YouTube as soon as we can um, get it up there and, you know, edit out the beginning and the end of it. Um, we'll get it fixed up. Uh, hopefully we'll also get it captioned. If you would like to come to this meeting and we will also make this announcement in our email for next week. If you want to attend and you need accessibility accommodations such as captioning or ASL sign language, et cetera, please let us know um, as soon as possible, at least by Wednesday of the week prior so that we can make sure that we have the service here that you need. Um, the other thing I would remind you is to not remind you because you didn't know the zoom in with Judy human the interview that was on a couple of weeks ago. Um, in fact, Katie was uh, one of the co hosts for that interview Judy human is one of the disability thought leaders in America, someone who has worked throughout the The world. She was the director of the World Act on the disability rights that we all have today, including the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. That entire interview, hour-long interview, is on YouTube now, and I think if Heather found it, she'll post that link up there on the screen. Uh, if not, um, if you type uh, "Zoom in with Judy Human" into your uh, little browser when you get to when you get to YouTube, it'll come up. So thank you for that. Um, oh, next week we're gonna have one of my favorite people, Lori Markland, who is executive director of the Maryland Technology Assistance Program. The Maryland Technology Assistance Program has equipment to loan so that you can test it out before you buy it. They also have funds available at 3% uh, for, uh, for technology so that if you wanna buy something but you can't afford it and maybe you don't have such good credit, but well, they can work around all those issues and help you get the accessibility um, equipment that you need. Um, your contributions, uh, I always like to mention this, what we, you make what we do possible. We could not function and do all the things that we do without the donations that you provide. So please consider that when you sign up for future um, meetings. And I wanna thank everybody for being here today. Uh, thank you all for, and thank you specifically, Quentin, for your uh, fine presentation. Very well organized, very thoughtful, and took on some tough questions. We always appreciate that. And, uh, and thanks for your receptivity. So <laughs> thanks everybody and uh, take care. We'll see you next Monday at two o'clock with Lori Markland from the Maryland Technology Assistance Program. If you have ideas for shows that you want us to do, send them along. We'll get them, we'll take care of them. Thank you, folks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Mike.